day in Berea highlighted by a contract extension for linebacker Jeremiah Usu koromoa We'll talk about it. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd, and I appreciate you all who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. If you have not joined the everyday crowd by now, well, you need to rectify that. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel, become an everydayer. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Busy day, obviously, out in Berea uh, with the Minnesota Vikings in town for joint practices. We will get to that. Uh, The latest on Mike Hall, we will get to that as well. Um, But early today, um, the Browns... And linebacker Jeremiah Uskoromoa have reached agreement on a contract extension. As everybody knows, Jeremiah is entering the fourth year of his rookie four-year deal. This contract will be slated to start for the 2025 season. Jeremiah will be re-signed up for three years, almost $39.9 million, 25 of which guaranteed. This, when we talked about it, uh, we talked about a few weeks ago trying to project this contract extension, and you kind of figured where they had and where you would think JOK would be slated right around that Matt Milano, Patrick Queen type of contract. Well, the Browns got JOK for less than Matt Milano, less than what the Pittsburgh Steelers are giving Patrick Queen. That's a hat tip right there, kids. You don't know my feelings on Patrick Queen. Uh, But JOK now in his fourth season, um, rookie year, you, you saw a good play. Second year, you saw a good play. Some injuries kind of derailed. And not like major injuries, but kind of slowed him down. But in year three, finally playing behind a competent defensive line, an interior defensive line with some talent, you finally got to see just exactly what the vision was for the Browns when they drafted Jeremiah Wusukoromo. Here was this guy at Notre Dame who was a hybrid defender. Um, It was much better coming forward. From you know a you know box safety spot so to speak, or an outside linebacker spot, or inside, or even on the line of scrimmage, than he certainly was going backwards. You know the Browns saw this. You know that was something the Browns wanted to do was make the transition to make him a full time linebacker. Um, when you brought in Jim Schwartz, who put a, such an emphasis and such pressure on Andrew Barry and the Browns to vastly improve the interior of the defensive line. You get what you got last year. You get a player who's as talented as Jeremiah Wusukoromo with all the athletic ability. Um, his read and recognition skills get better each and every year to this point. He truly knows what's going on. He truly sees what's going on. He trusts his eyes. He trusts his instincts. He trusts his film work. And you just saw a player where it all came together. 20 tackles either at or behind the line of scrimmage last season. You know, a couple of huge plays in that Thursday night game against the Jets where, you know, his brains and his talent were just ahead of what the Jets were calling. It wasn't necessarily bad play calling by the Jets. It was just that JOK was just so much in that zone. He was beating guys to the spot, just literally outplaying the play. Uh, so for Jeremiah Usukoromoa, it's really, really, you know, it, it's been a fun ride and fun developmental ride and watching this guy go from the second round pick where the Browns drafted him. Um, and he's starting to see the flashes, certainly as a rookie and then certainly in year two. And then it all just came together last year. Pro Bowl type caliber numbers, uh, over 100 tackles, 20 tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. Just an incredible, incredible year. Um, he is back in the fold now with the Browns practicing. He and Jordan Hicks should make a really, really nice duo here for the Browns in 2024. Uh, You know, so for JOK, you know, his just dessert, you know, finally got his Browns with now 13 players who make over $10 million on the roster. 
it's not crazy to believe there'll be another one probably next summer, which most likely would be uh, cornerback Martin Emerson. Um, so there's a you know a lot of talent in that building in Berea. So credit where it's due, Andrew Berry, and of course Kevin Stefanski, all the scouting department. These guys have really, really you know picked it up, and you know, really, really have gotten it done as opposed to what you know the Browns had been and have been in the past. Uh, this team right now, you know, it is all all systems go. Uh, the latest on Mike Hall Jr. Mike Hall was in the building today. Um, Mike Hall did everything, participated in, you know, uh, pre-practice, you know, participated in walkthrough, um, was, you know, physically in the joint practices himself before he left practice a little bit early, dinged up, no word yet. And just exactly what was the ailment or the injury for Mike Hall Jr., um, the Browns did make one announcement. They didn't speak much about Mike or, you know, or about, you know, any of the situation that was going on with Mike. Um, the statement was brief and it was simple is they are going to let the legal process carry out. Um, don't know what's next for Mike in terms of a court date or, you know, anything of that nature. Um, I, I did just have somebody come out and reach out to me last night and it was just, I didn't really think about it until I kind of got the text message and it was just that if, you know, Mike did all these things Monday night that he was accused of doing and, you know, look, he may have, I'm not trying to say he's innocent. I am not trying to take a side here. I'm just trying to report you some information. Um, Mike apparently ended up going to a hotel Monday night. Um, but if what he did was so egregious and so dangerous, why did the authorities not try to track him down through his cell phone, through his vehicle, through his credit cards and go arrest him on the spot? You know, why was it, you know, another 11, 12 hours before Mike, you know, walked into the Avon police department, of course, with his attorney and his legal team. Um, and then, you know, end up getting arrested and then going over to the courthouse and getting arraigned. I don't know if it means anything. I really do not know if it means anything at all. But it was just a thought that in you know talking with people yesterday that somebody hit me with last night after I recorded. And like me and my wife, we watch a lot of legal shows. Um, so it did kind of cross my mind when that was said to me is you know, why were they okay with it going another 12 hours as opposed to just trying to go find him and bring him in again, could mean something could mean nothing. Who knows? Um, you know, so the Browns, this is where they're at with Mike. Um, Mike is a participant and currently a player for the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, until the legal process goes further or, you know, I guess the Browns, you know, get handed more evidence one way or the other, you know, they're just going to let this one play out. And then when whatever the, you know, ultimate ending, I guess would be is, you know, when the Browns will, you know, make a decision as far as, you know, Mike's future with the team, any disciplinary action that they're going to take is certainly most likely there will be some disciplinary action from the league. So JOK gets extended. My call um, back to work today, probably the best place to be. I mean, just want to get yourself, hopefully, you know, your, your mind focused on what is your job for the time being, I guess, of course. Um, and, but, you know, Mike did end up leaving practice a little early. No word yet on just exactly what the ailment was. Browns offense faced the Vikings defense. Browns defense faced the Vikings offense. We're going to talk a little about the offense side of the ball. We'll continue on here. Your latest Locked On Browns. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Jeff Lloyd, your host. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. Join the everyday crowd. Get in on the everyday action by subscribing to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. So it's free wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, JOK, an extension. Mike Hall back in the building and working today after uh, the Monday night incident, the Tuesday arrest. Da, 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 da. Uh, Browns offense versus the Minnesota Vikings defense. Um, my kingdom, my kingdom for a tackle. Um, we've talked about this a lot here over the last couple of weeks. Um, when are the Browns 
going to get their starting offensive tackles back. Um, most likely, I mean, you know, more importantly, Jedrick Wills. Um, James Hudson, again, just not a left tackle. Uh, Adenaje playing some left tackle. Jermaine Afidi playing some left tackle. Um, again, we can't get a concrete word from anybody on when anybody is expecting Jedrick Wills to even put on a jersey, put on some pads, cleats. Give me something. Can we get something on any of this? Can somebody give me an update on something? Because uh, we have nothing right now. Uh, but this is kind of a detriment right now to the Browns. Um, and, of course, Brian Flores, Minnesota Vikings defensive coordinator. Great football mind. Great, great defensive mind. You know, so what do you do when you know you got an offensive line with issues? Bring the noise. Um, you know, so he you brought a couple of, you know, defensive back blitzes. You know, those got home. Um, it was bringing a lot of pressure. Those were leading to false start penalties. Um, you know, whether it was Hudson, whether it was Adenogy, Afidi. I mean, a lot of these guys were having issues. Though there was a penalty on Dewan Jones as well. But after a first 11 and 11 session, the Browns kind of got a little bit more into the groove, if you so to speak. Um, but Jerry Judy highly involved today. Um, and you're starting to, to see, you know, the Jerry Judy, Deshaun Watson relationship. It's it should be special because there is now a receiver here and maybe he is not on Amari Cooper's level, Amari Cooper's level yet, but athletically, you know, route running after the catch, he's close. He's close. So this is by far the most talented guy Amari Cooper has played with in his time here with the Cleveland Browns. Amari certainly has some catches today. Elijah Moore, some catches today. David Njoku, I believe it was three receptions in a four-play sequence. One of them was a 30-yard deep crosser. Um, so you're really, again, starting to see it. And all of this was from Deshaun. We've got to keep that in mind. Where the Browns said Deshaun was going to get most of the reps today and tomorrow and not play Saturday. There's no BS to it. It's truly looking like that is the case. You know, every, he was out there today very much amped up 100% at everything he was doing today. Getting everybody involved, this immense, immense talent of, of you know, immense talent uh, that he has at the wide receiver position. Uh, in a two minute drill, a huge 20 yard out to Cedric Tillman, who again is, you know, putting together. And for Cedric Tillman, you talk about stacking days, and Cedric Tillman continues to do that. There's always something to talk about with Cedric Tillman on any given day. So the growth is there. And, you know, the thing was for Cedric Tillman is not only is the growth there, you know, and all the effort, but, you know, when you do all that stuff in the spring and all that effort you put into it, you need to see the results because the results give you the confirmation, you know, and help that confidence, you know, because you walk into it like, all right, I think I did it. I feel that I know, I know things I didn't know. I've worked on the things coaches told me to work on, but then it's got to start to lead, you know, to some success. And it's been doing just that for Cedric Tillman, which is really, really big. Um, as we know, David Bell's still out. You know, Jamari Thrash, the other wide receivers out there. Um, and I actually had somebody hit me up. And you know what? I, I do owe, you know, I just haven't mentioned him. And I apologize. Uh, Mike Woods for coming off the Achilles last year. Mike Woods has had a nice little camp. He really has. Um, you know, maybe he gets an opportunity to play up a little bit Saturday against Minnesota. And when I say up, you know, maybe second quarter. Maybe some reps in the first quarter. Um, you know, I don't know how it's going to work. I think Mike Woods is in a really tough spot to make this final roster for the Browns. Um, but, you know, Mike Woods deserves, you know, some flowers, deserves some you know, chatter. So congratulations, Mike Woods, on some of the things that he's been able to do here the last couple of weeks. Um, it's certainly a devastating injury, and even worse is the rehab process and just being away from your team and your teammates. Um, but Mike Woods has really, really put it together here. Um, the run game. Nothing, nothing. Jerome Ford, nothing there. Pierre Strong, nothing there. And look, it, it, as much as the offensive line is certainly an issue in pass pro and keeping Deshaun protected, it's also a huge, huge thing as far as the run game. And until Jedrick Wills is back, and, until the Browns are f fielding a formidable offensive line or what is the best version, best five of their offensive line, they're in a tough spot. It's just not getting anything done. And it's probably really slowing down the progression of this team as far as you know, getting deeper and deeper into the new offense. 
Um, and again, just can we get an update? And uh, look, you know, and it's not necessarily about Jack Conklin because I kind of have almost the utmost confidence in Dewan Jones to go out there and do the job. But, you know, and again, you know, by not playing and being hurt, Jedrick Wills, you know, in this fan base's eyes, just becomes more and more of, you know, the guy they want to see. Um, so, you know, we'll, it, it, obviously it's not going to be anything this week. He's not going to show up tomorrow and take a place and join practices. He's not going to show up Friday for a walkthrough. He's not going to show up Saturday to play in the preseason game. Monday? Can we get some Monday? And the other thing is, is anybody asking? I, I, I listen to a lot of these pressers. Is anybody even asking about where Jed Wills is at? You know, like how close are we to, you know, throwing on a set of Nike cleats? You know, does he even have pads in his locker right now? Uh, you know, look, it's getting late early. It is uh, August 14th. So, therefore, we got 17 more days this month and eight days into September. We are 25 days away from facing the Dallas Cowboys. When and where? <laughs> this offensive tackle is going to come back. But Brown's offense did get some work done today and got some quality work done today. Um, big aid, big help to this team would be getting back that offensive line. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. We're going to talk about the defense versus the Vikings offense. And we're going to talk about the Vikings. And what's going on for them may not be all bad. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Parents, it's coming that time of year again. When your schedule is packed with your kids' activities, school, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, know what we need, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. For me, I, I've tried to be open with you guys about this. You know, I spoke to you all about you know what we went through as far as my wife and thought I was fine. I really did. And until I actually started to speak to somebody, I didn't realize how disturbed I had been by the whole situation, how taxed I had been the whole situation and, you know, didn't think much about myself. And it's made me a better person. It's made me a better husband. It certainly made me a better father. So don't be afraid. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. We are closing out your latest Lockdown Browns. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. Uh, become an everydayer. Don't miss any of the Lockdown Browns actions. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Um, now, just as much as we talked about the Browns offensive line had issues today, well, the Minnesota Vikings offense had issues. Um, certainly finding out that first round pick, J.J. McCarthy, who underwent um, meniscus surgery, um, was deemed that it is most likely J.J. McCarthy is going to be out for the rest of the season. Already missed his rookie year. Um, had an incredible performance last weekend. Um, and now for the Minnesota Vikings, you get word, unfortunately, that most likely J.J. McCarthy's rookie year is done. Browns dominated. Uh, Miles Garrett could not be blocked, whether it was the right tackle, whether it was the left tackle. Uh, you know, the reigning defensive player of the year continued to rain down terror as you know, the Minnesota Vikings had no answer for him today. Uh, cornerbacks, um, Miles Harden with a pick six. Uh, Khalif, Kale uh, Khalif Halassi with an interception. Uh, Sam Darnold, I think, at one point, and he heard it from some of the other Browns sidelines. Yo, bro, it was one of 12. One of 12 was Sam Darnold at one point today in joint practices. Um, and even there was a long win to Justin Jefferson, but apparently everybody you asked that is Cleveland Browns related said it was a sack and there's no way that play should have counted. But this is, you know, some of the nonsense you do get into when you get into these scrimmage, uh, these practice and joint practice type of things. Um, did also happen, have at one point, <laughs> 
Minnesota Vikings head coach. Kevin O'Connell, seek out Greg Schwartz. And I don't know if the conversation was to uh, call off the dogs or, you know, hey, you guys are at 110. Can you take it down to about 85? Um, which drew another quip from somebody in the Browns secondary. Um, Y'all couldn't catch a cold right now, I believe. So I'm not sure if it was Juan Thornhill, Grant Elpit, but you know, apparently, you know, it came from somewhere where the safeties would be. Um, so you just you, you get excited, you know, in the Browns defense, you know, wish Shelby Harris back. Um, we're starting to get everybody back, you know, Jordan Hicks, you know, uh, Denzel Ward out again, um, Denzel Ward in the protocol, but was outside. So I, it doesn't necessarily mean he had a concussion. Or, you know, he's in the protocol or when the Browns, when you have these injury Browns, just say, look, take two to three days. You know, if we don't have a definitive answer one way or the other, you're just going to take some time. Does Denzel Ward need to practice in August? No, not at all. Um, do you do get concerned, you know, you know, when you start knowing that somebody's maybe had, you know, a decent amount of head injuries as a former football player who had a good amount of head injuries? Yeah. The concern is real. The concern is legitimate. And, you know, definitely, yeah, you know, think and hope for the best, certainly for Denzel Ward. Um, but was out there, was cheering on his teammates, having a good time. So hopefully, you know, it is, you know, not as bad as we all think. Um, certainly probably means Denzel Ward not be playing Saturday against the Minnesota Vikings. Again, that's fine. But for the Minnesota Vikings, um, the J.J. McCarthy news is rough. It really is. Um, he had certainly looked the part. Um, you know, such a huge, huge part of the Michigan team the last couple of years. Um, and then you find this out, and it was knee soreness. Oh, it's a little something with the meniscus, and all of a sudden it's a full repair on the meniscus. And all of a sudden, you know, within 14 hours, it was from J.J. McCarthy's knee was sore to J.J. McCarthy's rookie years over. Um, but here is kind of where this maybe could be advantageous for the Minnesota Vikings in making the move to trade up. For J.J. McCarthy, the, the Vikings give up a lot. So as it stands right now, the Minnesota Vikings for the 2025 NFL draft have a first-round pick and two fifth-round picks. That's it. That's all they got. So if this season and with Sam Darnold, and hey, you never know. Yeah, Sam Darnold can go out there and get some things done. You know, Josh Dobbs was running around making plays last year. It didn't lead to a lot of wins, of course. But there's no saying Sam Darnold can't maybe go out there and you know, make some things happen for this team. But if it doesn't go well for the Minnesota Vikings, which I probably think is going to be the case, um, Jordan Addison did leave practice safe for the Minnesota Vikings. They just said it was some sort of ankle thing. They don't think it's a big deal. He's certainly not going to be out there tomorrow. It means maybe he won't be out there Saturday as well. But, again, Jordan Addison is certainly you know something that is a big, big help for the Vikings. Again, September, more important than August, obviously. You know, 10 out of 10 and twice on Sunday. So he's okay. So if this doesn't go well, you know, the Vikings can maybe start to move on from a player or two during the regular season, add some draft capital back that way. Um, the other thing would be is if this doesn't go very well at all and Minnesota gets somewhere where they're in the top five, say, in the 2025 NFL draft order, it can work two ways for them. They could either take that pick and add an absolute stud to J.J. McCarthy, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, uh, T.J. Hawkinson. You can add a stud there on the offensive side of the ball. Or go get an absolute stud defensive player. Or say you have a top five pick, top three pick. You've already got the quarterback. You've got two wide receivers. you got a tight end. So maybe you take that first-round pick and you drop back 15, 20 spots. And you recoup all the draft assets you gave up to jump up for J.J. McCarthy. So for the Minnesota Vikings, this is tough, certainly. You know, and, you know, my buddy Thor Q, um, a huge, huge, you know, Minnesota Vikings guy. And he, J.J. was this guy the entire time. Uh, absolutely wanted him, got him. And, you know, now it just, you know, everybody in Vikings land is just kind of, there's nothing worse than thinking your season's over before it started. Browns fans, I know you know this. Um, so from a fandom standpoint, there's nothing worse than thinking your season is over before it started. So it's a really, really brutal thing to deal with. And, you know, look, uh, you know, uh, I'm not picking on any fan base whatsoever. We all like the Cleveland Browns, right? But to know that type of, you know, Kavorka, that type of hex, um, it's just tough. But, you know, for Minnesota, if he can get past and just get through 2024, 
could set you up really, really sweet for 2025. Um, so certainly interesting, you know, from that standpoint. Uh, so today, I, of course, covered, you know, Jeremiah Uso-Koromoa, three years, almost $40 million, three years, 13.3 per, $25 million guaranteed on his contract extension. Puts him just a little below Patrick Queen and Matt Milano, kind of where I figured. I personally think he's better than both of those two guys. Um, but the Browns get these deals done. The Browns don't usually lose these deals. But congratulations, Jeremiah Wusu koromo of course. Uh, Mike Hall was at practice today, did participate in practice today, did leave early today, dinged up. Again, no word as to what was the reason that Mike left early, you know, what the actual ailment injury slash was. Um, the offense, you know, the offensive line continues to be an issue. It's an issue running the ball. It's an issue in pass protection. Um, but when they can find a way to get out of their own way and give Deshaun Watson some time, he's able to get Jerry Judy involved. He's able to get Amari Cooper involved. He was able to get David Njoku involved. He's able to get Cedric Tillman involved. He's able to get Elijah Moore involved. So when they can get what they need from the offensive line, the passing game has been pretty choice. Uh, defensively, yeah, look, I mean, Minnesota – it's, you know, this is just a brutal, brutal unit. The Browns are a brutal defensive unit. And maybe today a little fired up and, you know, ready to go in these joint practices. The opportunity to get to see somebody else in another jersey was really probably just what the doctor ordered today. Browns defense was all over the place. Miles was unstoppable. The secondary put Sam Darnold in an absolute blender. I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. Day. Uh, if you are not a member of the everyday crowd, I suggest you join the everyday crowd. Become one of the filthy animals. I love the filthy animals. Become a filthy animal. Become an everydayer. Subscribe to Lockdown Brad's YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcast. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go, Browns.